learning target 2.18, I can name ionic compounds. Um, actually, I'm only going to teach you how to name binary compounds. Okay, so binary compounds are ionic compounds that just have two elements. Okay, or two charges, a plus and a minus. Okay, at any rate. So how do we name an ionic compound? We name an ionic compound by combining the names of the two elements that make up the compound. Really simple. Okay, the, um, so here's how it works. Step one, the ion with positive charge is placed first. This usually is your metal. Um, step two, ion with negative charge Your anion is placed second. Uh -huh. um, this is usually your nonmetal. Usually, I'll go into an exception in just a moment. Um, three, change or add the suffix IDE at the end of your negatively charged ion. Okay, so that's about it. It's really simple. Um, I am not going to go over the transition metals and how to name that, right? But please ask your teacher if you have questions on that. Okay. So an example, two examples, right? Just right off the bat, we've heard of NaCl, that's sodium chloride. Note the IDE at the end. Note that the metal is first, the nonmetal second. And here's another one, right? Calcium oxide, right? So here, just take a note that oxygen, we sort of, it's not oxygenide, that's a little bit ridiculous. So what we do is we drop igen and then we add ide, okay? And a last one, just for future reference or just to sort of solidify what you guys know, aluminum, right, the first one. And the second one is fluoride. Do you care about the subscript? Don't worry about the subscripts. About subscripts. In ionic naming. Okay, they don't do anything in ionic naming. Um, now, here's the tricky part, and that's something that's a polyatomic ion. I'm just gonna write it here, but we'll go over what that looks like. Okay, so here's a key note. If the anion is a polyatomic, or the or the cation for that matter. Polyatomic ions, write them as they are named. Don't change to IDE. Okay, let's go over two examples. Go ahead and write this down. We're gonna try CaCl2. CaCl2. Sorry, that's my dog. Okay, CaCl2. So step one was to write the ion with the positive charge first. That would be calcium, right? This one's the positively charged one. This one's the negatively charged one. Oh my God. Duncan, Duncan. So sorry, that's calcium. So I'm gonna write that first. The second step is to figure out the one with the negative charge, which is Cl2, and that's chlorine, right? And the final step is going to change the ending of your negative charge one to ide. So that's 
fluoride. I'm gonna drop the I and E, okay? So put all this together, you have calcium fluoride. How do you know if it's a positive or a negative charge? Right? Remember, usually the metal is first and the non-metal is second. So use your periodic table. Okay. Now, take a look at the next example. <coughs> Duncan. Hey. I'm trying to record here. Relax. <laughs> Relax. Apologies. Okay. Um, take a look at this one. You're probably thinking, huh, wait a minute, there is more than two elements here. You're right, that's an issue. But the last note I wrote down was that if you have a polyatomic ion, you're going to write it as it is. So let's go ahead and break this down. Ba is barium. That's my positive charge. You should probably know about your polyatomics, but SO4 is a polyatomic ion. The charge in that is minus. So now you treat this as the whole anion, treat this as the whole cation. So, hmm. Step one. Let's go ahead and try it. Step one is the cation first, which is barium. Step two as we said in the note, if it's a polyatomic ion, you write it as it is, right? So I'm looking at the negative one. SO4 is sulfate. And step three, change the ending, but don't change the ending because it's a polyatomic ion. Therefore, this is called barium sulfate. All right. 